feeling like a shark in a shrimp tank. Big fish, small pond in the shrimp so, guys, welcome back to the Shrimp Tank Charleston podcast. I'm your host, Eric Elkins, and I'm sitting here with Mr. Eric Bland, uh, a man of all kinds of things. I mean, the guy is an attorney. He's a real estate mogul. He's a lover. He's a husband. He's a father. It just goes on and on. But this is really the I've been waiting to just go over this one story with you, and then we can just call it an end, is at one time, Rick... Flair was your client. Yeah, for about two years. Two years. I, what? How does that come about? Like, how does Ric Flair come into your life? Who who says call Eric Bland? Um, actually, a guy that I used to practice with when I came down here in South Carolina. His name is Joe Connell. He's a Mormon. He's a, a solo practitioner attorney in Camden, South Carolina. Ric Flair's wife at the time was a Mormon. And Rick, was this his third or fourth? At that time, I think it was his third wife. Uh, her name was Tiffany Flair. And at the time, Stivers Lincoln Mercury in Columbia, South Carolina, was using a Ric Flair lookalike who would say, woo, you know, to beat the man, you got to beat the man. And they kept on using his woo. Oh, yeah. And so. Uh, I can't I, I can't do um, Ric Flair. I, I can do the, uh, uh, the macho. Uh, I can't no, do the macho. You did Hulk Hogan, too, for me. Yeah. Uh, well, Oh, brother. Yeah. Brother. But go ahead. Sorry. So um, his wife knew Joe Connell and said, hey, we think this isn't right, that Stivers is using. Really? This is the story. Somebody's using Ric Flair's look like wearing the robe, you know, the glittered up robe. And so he wants to do something about it. And so are you willing to meet with Ric Flair? And so. I said, am I willing to meet with Ric Flair? I mean, I grew up watching I the Four Horsemen, you know, um, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, see, I wouldn't, Anderson. I wouldn't think up in Philly that was the wrestling. I would have thought it was more it the was, WWF or whatever it was it, called. No, at that time it was uh, with Bruno San Martino, and they had Dusty Rhodes and all. But I did watch the NWA with Harley Race and, and Chief Wahoo McDaniel and Ricky Steamboat yeah, growing yeah. up. And oh, so yeah. I always loved Flair. I mean, everything about Flair is just magic. I, mean, I agree. The way he talks, the way he used to tell Shivani, you know, my shoe costs more than your house, and women, and riding Space Mountain. And, you know, when Rick, Rick's right, you know, to walk the aisle every night, you know, you got to be, to be the man, you better beat the man. And uh, so I said, oh, my God, I, you know, for craps and grins, I said, I got to meet. Yeah, oh, I'll be glad to talk to him. And so he drove down, and he came into my office, and he walked in, and <laughs> I'm telling you, man, it, it was magic. We hit it off real well. He saw that I was a lifter. Um, we started, I started talking to him, and I never, you know, said, hey, you're the greatest. You know, you're my childhood. You're I just strictly professional. Did you do the... No, I didn't do it, but I'll tell you what happened. Chris Moran, who's in my office, he's a he's a lawyer, and he owns half the building. Well, he came downstairs to look at a law book in the conference room, and he opens the door, and I'm sitting there, and right across the table is Ric Flair. And I'm telling you, Chris Moran is six feet four. He almost fainted. I, it, it was a double take where you know you look, and then you look. And you look back, and I mean, he he froze. And we're talking two thousands, uh, two thousand, about two thousand and nine. Okay. And so I represented. He said, "I want to retain you." And I said, "Look, can you show me how to do the figure four? And I'm not kidding you. On my office, the day that you, he says he wants to retain yeah, you, because we it was two hours we talked, and he he said, "You're a great guy. Tell me about lifting." Da 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 da. And I said, "Look, I got to know how to do the figure four leg lock." And so. In my office hallway, he put me in the figure four, and I put him in the figure four, and I'll show you the photos on my phone. Really? And so um, I went after uh, Stivers. I recovered some money for Ric Flair, and in the process, I got a phone call from uh, the WWE's lawyer who said, we understand that you're suing Stivers uh, on behalf of Ric Flair because, you know, they're the woo." You know, we own that, and I'm like, "What do you mean we own? You own that? That's that's his intellectual property." And he said, "No, when you sign a WWE contract, you give up every bit of your persona." Really? And Vince McMahon owns. I said, "Well, will Mr. McMahon give us consent to sue?" 
And he did. And so I made a relationship with this attorney. And so I got a good result for Rick. And Rick said, you know, I'm about to negotiate my last contract with the WWE. I, I like the way you do business. I like how you know hard-nosed you are. Would you be willing to negotiate my last contract? And so at this point, uh, yeah, sure, sure. And he's like, well, we got to fly up to meet Vince McMahon. So I call my partner, Ronnie, on the phone, and I say, Ronnie, you, you, you're not going to believe this. He says, I got I to gotta go. So Ronnie, who wasn't really handling the flair matter, he's just coming along because he's a flair aficionado like me. And at that time, we started going to dinner with Ric Flair. Um, it was my 50th birthday. Listen to this. And so he says, let's go to Del Frisco's in Charlotte. So uh, the Lapines come, who you know, and a whole bunch of other people, Greg Leone, a whole bunch, all my clients. And we have about 30 people at uh, Del Frisco's. And he gives me his boot. Ric Flair had two pairs of boots his whole career, the RF on the side. And I have... For I my, know, it's in your office, right? He gave me the Ric Flair, his boot, and wrote to an ass-kicking, you know, women-stealing-kicking <laughs> lawyer, you know, you... Oh, read. that's great. And so he says, let's go up and um, negotiate our con my last contract with McMahon. So Ronnie and I, we fly up with Rick. A Bentley limousine picks us up at the... Uh, it's in Connecticut or something? Yeah, he's in Greenwich, Connecticut. Picks us up at LaGuardia, and we drive up there, and there's this huge building, and it's right off of I-95. It says WWE. It's 15 floors. The building is... Is Rick preparing you for how Vince he's can He's telling be? me that it, it's going to be uh, tense, that, Vic, that Vince isn't a nice guy. So is not. Is not a nice guy. And Vince doesn't like lawyers. He tells me that right away. So he says, you know, you're going to get some hostility. But I said, look, they have to pay you what you're worth. And at that time, Rick owed some money to McMahon, who loaned him money, and Batista. And so he had to make a lot of money. Rick had a lot of up and downs financially. It's no secret when you see his sure. special that they did on the ESPN. He, he, he went through a lot of money. So we drive up to the building, and they drive you underneath, and there's all these Bentleys and Rolls Royces under there in the building. And you get out, and they walk you through the, the, the door, and it's a huge gym. And in there is King Kamala, um, every, every big wrestler. They're just, like, practicing and stuff? No, they work out. There's a gym there in the building. Uh, the Rock and Roll Express was there. Um, Rowdy Roddy Piper, who, and I wanted to stop off and leave Rick because I love Rowdy because he can really bring it. And so we, they bring us in the lobby. You, you have to sign in, and they make us wait. And they make us wait. And they're making Ric Flair wait for an hour. And you don't make Ric Flair wait for an hour. So an hour goes by, and finally this private elevator door opens up. And this lovely lady comes out, and she says, Mr. McMahon will see you now. Well, Mr. McMahon, Vince, has his own elevator. And the, there's 15 floors of administrative uh, different things. And at the time, um, I asked to use the phone, and they put me in. Are you nervous at all? A little bit. A little bit. I, I really but you're was. not showing it. because this. I was nervous because I'm meeting my, meeting my heroes, not because I'm not you know, nervous about the deal. But um, how am I going to react? So I will tell you that I made a phone call out of Dusty Rhodes' office, and I took one of his pens. I have a WWF Dusty Rhodes pen off his office. So anyway, we go up this palatial elevator. You get off, top floor of the building, and it's all neon mirrors with the, uh, uh, the WWE WrestleMania posters. And the carpet's like three inches thick. And so they walk us into this office, and sitting behind an open desk, is Vince McMahon. And when I tell you, you think I got big arms. He's a monster. This is a guy that... It, but that's got to be... That's HGH. That's yeah, all whatever. Monica. He's 66 years old, and he's huge. And he's sitting there drinking a protein <sighs> shake. So I walk in and flare... And, and McMahon, Does he have that look on his face? His that jaws are tensing, and you could see he's, he's seething with anger at Flair. That Flair brought lawyers to negotiate his contract. And sitting on the left is Stephanie, his daughter. Triple H is sitting there, who I really? love, and his lawyer, Ed Kaufman. Well, McMahon's sitting there. And he can have lawyers, but, but Rick can't? No. And so I walk over, and I put my hand out, and I say, Mr. McMahon, my name's Eric Bland. 
He grabs my hand across the table and he pulls me across his desk because the leverage, he's sitting down and I'm standing up. He grabs my hand and he pulls me across the desk and I'm like coming across the desk and I, I quickly throw my hands up like that and he's glaring at me. And so we sit down and he doesn't say anything for a minute and you could see he's grinding his teeth. Well, what is Rick doing? Rick's nervous at this point because it, it's totally tense at this point. And Rick's sitting there, and nothing is said for a minute. Because he's pissed off at Rick because he owes him money. He, he owes him money. He's put him on. And Flair wants to be on WrestleMania because you make the money if you're on the card at WrestleMania. That's where you make your money. You don't make it on the other 180 days where you're going all over the world and country. It's WrestleMania where you make a piece of the gate. And so Rick's trying to get on the card at WrestleMania to be, this is going to be my last match. Um and so he doesn't say anything for a minute, and he's just doing this with his hands, and he looks over at Rick, and he goes, you know what I hate, Rick? I hate goddamn lawyers. <laughs> and I say, well, if that's the case, this meeting's over with. And I turn to Ed Kaufman, his lawyer, and I said, shame on you for sitting there and letting him talk about that. You say this. I said that. And Ronnie, my partner, is like, oh, my God, what is going to happen here? Is there going to be a fight? And at that point... Everything started settling down. I give credit to Stephanie and Triple H. They say, look, let's sit here and cut a deal. And we spent the next two hours and we negotiated. So this Triple H, I know he's whatever his real name is, but he he really he runs it. He really is a true executive. He he's a, he's legit. Like he's not just some no, wrestler. He, he is he is a wrestler. I know, but he's No, he and he, Stephanie really run. The the organization. Where is Shane. what about the other brother, the other son, Shane? Yeah, he he's, lived in New York and just had a great time. He did not. He, he Vince didn't like him being part of the business. He really wasn't a great wrestler. He was a wrestler for a while. Um, he just has a good time in New York City. And obviously, uh, Vince McMahon's wife was in the Trump administration, running the Small Business Administration, and she ran for Senate of Connecticut. And so we get done. And then we, Flair says, well, let's go live it up in New York wait City. Wait a minute, wait a minute. But what happens during the negotiations? Two then? hours worth. We, he, we get him on the card at WrestleMania. Vince forgives some of his debt. Um, it's going to be a two-year kind of rollout, last contract. And it's going to be like a grand finale tour for two years. Ric Flair's being done. And so we negotiated Ric Flair's last contract. And so when we get done... Rick says, let's go live it up in New York City. But wait a minute. I thought you also negotiated for him to own the woo. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, he was able to take with him his intellectual property after the two years of the contract's up. And so Rick now owns his woo and to be the man, you got to beat the man and limousine stealing, you know, Space Mountain, the whole thing. Really? So we get done, and he says, let's go live it up in New York City. We go to Smith & Walensky, you know, at 53rd and Lexington, and we walk in with Ric Flair. I'm telling you, they couldn't throw enough food <laughs> at us, and everybody's coming up thinking I'm, I'm, I'm some kind of superstar. I'm nobody. I'm a lawyer from Columbia, South Carolina. And so um, we, we negotiated Flair's last wrestling contract. Oh, my God. I've been feeling like a shark. 